What's up, fellas, man? Um, I just wanted to do a video, man, because I'm I've been hearing about a lot of rookie mistakes traveling, especially to the DR, man. And um, you know, hopefully, I can help people, you know, make better decisions, man, especially for you newbies, man. So, um, the women in the DR, um, and other countries as well, um. You know, you meet them online, they're attractive, you know, they have all this time to spend on the phone with you and you feel like you develop some type of chemistry and bond. And, you know, their situation makes you want to dig in your pocket and, and help out. You know, it could be 20, 40 bucks. It may, it's nothing to you, you know what I mean? So you, you feel like you, you know, did your good deed and... You know, you feel like, you know, she really appreciated and that's going to make y'all feel closer together, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, the the other side of the story is you, you just don't know their situation and what's going on and their history. Um, you know, I'm going to give a few examples of, you know, things I've seen. And, um, you know, um, the first chick I dated in DR... Uh, you know, I met her online, and, you know, I didn't know nothing about DR at the time. You know, um, I knew what went on as far as, um, you know, prostitution goes, but just as far as, like, dating and stuff like that. I just didn't know the level of games that some women play out there. So, you know, I met a chick, you know, we met up, and um, to make a long story short, you know, I started to help her out a little bit, you know, and what I quickly realized was that, you know, my help was maybe like 40 bucks, you know, every month or every two weeks. And we only dated like, like, like three months and it wasn't appreciated. You know what I mean? And it's, you know, you would think you help a person at one time. And then the next time you, you, you can't help them out and their whole demeanor and attitude change. And luckily when I was in DR, you know, I went through a phone and I seen these messages on Facebook. She was talking about getting a divorce or trying to get a divorce from a guy that was actually uh, a cousin-in-law. And it blew my mind. I'm like, wow, like this chick was, this chick is legally married to somebody and I didn't even know. And she wasn't, she, and she wasn't going to ever tell me. So it just made me realize that people be having situations going on and you never know what, what it is. So, you know, when I found out, you know, her, her mom, her brother, you know, they was trying to explain like, it's not, it's not really a, a legit marriage. She married, a cousin-in-law because she was trying to, you know, get a visa to come to the U.S. and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, anyway, that relationship quickly dissolved. And I, and, I, and I quickly realized that I can't take, you know, I can't take the woman serious like that, especially not living there. And then this other guy recently, you know, um, he married this girl from DR. And I know her, you know what I mean? She was like, you know, she was like a cool homegirl. I actually met her in Columbia working, you know, working in the streets, you know what I mean? And I hooked up with her um, in Columbia. So, you know, I seen, you know, I, you know, I remember she told me she met a guy and, you know, get married and stuff like that. And uh, in my head, I'm like, damn, I'm like, you know, you was, a, you know, a prostitute, you know? And, you know, she claimed he knew or whatever the case may be. This is like a year ago. So fast forward now, this guy was actually um, in, um, you know, in a Facebook group, Black Man's Option Group 2.0. And I seen the dude and I'm just like, man, he looked familiar. So... I hit him up. I'm like, hey, you um, you married to um, so-and-so? And he like, yeah. And he was like, yeah, I know you. He was like, I think I know you. She she said, she said, y'all, um, y'all, y'all cool or whatever. I'm like, yeah. So we're just, you know, small talk or whatever. 
And, you know, he started to ask about her and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I pretty much told him, like, her history. Because I fig- I thought he knew because she told me that he met her in that environment. He was like, no, I met her on Cupid. He was like, I knew something was strange with her. I used to see, you know, guys in her phone and her son used to say dudes was by the house. I'm just like, yeah, I'm like, she used to. You know, she worked in the club, you know, fucking at least three or four dudes a night, you know, and he like, man, like, I, like, he was just oblivious to it. I'm just like, shit, like, you met this girl on Cupid, you was compelled enough to want to marry her, and now y'all got a baby together, and like, now they might, they talking about divorce, you know, and he almost brought it to the U.S., but, you know, it didn't fall through or whatever, but. It made me realize, like, damn. And he even said, like, man, I, don't, I didn't really have any relationship experience. Um, so it was hard for me to really, you know, see the game. You know what I mean? But he kind of woken up now. But, you know, you, you already married and got a child with this chick. And she already got other kids. And you didn't know she was a hoe. So it just put in context, like, you don't really know these girls like that and then if you don't have experience with women you're not gonna really pick up on game like that so um you know just kind of slow down you know ask questions you know read blog you know read blogs videos and things like that and um i know people you know mention the rookie mistakes they make sending chicks money that they meet already and a lot of times they they be questioning if a girl is lying or not, you know, you know, it feel the relationship feel real, but they have doubts and stuff like that. Like you, you got to go with your gut feeling, man. Like, you know, I've seen chicks, you know, post pictures with dudes on their statuses and they like, Oh, that's my brother. That's my cousin. You know, you, you, you don't, you don't know. It could be their they boyfriend. They could be in on it or anything like that. Or they could be smashing relatives. Who knows? You know, but the point is you don't live there. And to avoid all the stress and headache, just go there wherever you go and just have fun. You know, only only a few people can actually live out the country. You know, whether they retire, ex-military, got a remote job, you know, or whatever situation they got where they could live abroad. But if you can't live abroad, just visit and have fun. You know, the long distance relationship is is not built for the weak and stupid. You know, and if you do got a long distance relationship, like you need to be there, you know, every every other month. If you can, you know, so um, just slow, slow, slow down. You don't have to send money. You don't have to feel sorry. Um, yeah, people might send you pictures of documents. Oh, I need help with this. Here's the proof. You know, people doctor up documents. People take pictures of people that look like they're sick or need food. You know, um, you know, not saying that they don't need help, but you, you're not gonna, you're not their savior. So. Um, they will be okay if you don't send them no money. They will be okay. They will not miss a meal because you wasn't able to help them out. You know, and um, that's it. And if you want, if you do want to help somebody, help them when when you're there, when you visit. Because nine times out of ten, there's people coming into those these countries every day. You know, help is. You know, help is coming every day in one form, shape or another. And, you know, the stories do the stories do tell me that live in these countries and they see these Western Union lines, you know, it's 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 crazy. You know, what I mean, it's it's a it's a joke, man. So, um, you know, wake up, fellas.